of all, could you introduce yourself and your pianist? And I'm what Jason you will be Smoller, and this is Dora Jun, and we're going to play Nun will die Sonne so hell aufgehen, which is the first song of Kinder Totenlieder.
Um, uh, just a technical question. We've had several introductions, and I don't know what time it is right now, so I presume we have about 20 minutes per person. If that's correct, Christian, uh, you don't need to say it. If it's not correct, then let me know. Um, wonderful. Um, there's, there's several ways to go up, up this glacier. Um, because you are the personal voice that we're hearing, and by the way, the filling in, which startled me at first, the filling in of some of the orchestral textures that, mm -hmm. that I wouldn't sing, uh, is, is one thing, and quite interesting, and probably appropriate for this environment. But since you're the personal voice, I'd like, to, I'd like to, first of all, concentrate as if you were trying to say what is not being said, mm -hmm. right? Rather than discussing necessarily your function in Mahler's music. We're always going to have this dichotomy today because the, it's very interesting to hear these melodies and this context of these songs played instrumentally without words. But, and, and, and so there's two issues going on. One, what would it be if it was sung? And second, what does other things, what other things are happening in the orchestra that will be informed by knowing all what we're going to talk about with Gustav Mahler? Now, the Kindertoten Lieder could be a session unto itself, and I could probably talk for hours on, on this as well, and, and not because it, but I'm so clever, but because there's so much to say. There are enormous amounts of misconceptions about the Kindertoten Lieder. And there's some, there's a couple of just bare-bone facts I'd like to offer all of you instrumentalists that you will never hear in any orchestra rehearsal. One. The Kindertoten Lieder is a, is a collection of poems written by Friedrich Rückert, one of the most famous Orientalists and, and translators of Oriental poetry in the late 19th century in Germany. That's where his profession really was. He also wrote some of the most beautic, beautiful romantic poetry uh, that we know, the Liebes Frühling, Love's Spring, which was set to music a lot by a lot of composers, mostly uh, Schumann. Wonderful poet, wonderful lyric way, and he and actually he took the mantle of Heine a step farther in the in the in the exploration of the first person in German poetry, and especially the expressiveness of. Now that has nothing to do with the Kindertotenlieder. The Kindertotenlieder is literally songs on the death of children, and Friedrich Rückert lost two children in the 60s, in the 1860s, to scarlet fever in a very short amount of time, and out of tremendous grief, as one would have, and the and the horrendous thought of losing children, which was unfortunately very common uh, in, in the 19th century, Friedrich Rückert wrote 425 poems on the death of those two children. 425. They were published posthumously by his remaining daughter and separately by his remaining son. And the two editions do not mix. The order of the poems is different. The thrust of the editions is different. The years of their publication are different. The only thing that remains constant is that they are complete. Now think about this. This is a man, a poet, who wrote 425 poems on the death of his two children and never intended them for publication. It was a very personal act of grieving, in his way, his own requiem. Then it is published in two separate editions in non-agreement not mean that they're contradictory, but just different collections and so forth. Here comes a composer, Friedrich, uh, Friedrich, Gustav Mahler, who has already written a lot of songs, who is looking for a poetic source that is in the first person, meaning the I of life. I experience this, I think of this, whatever. He finds Friedrich Rückert not in the Kindertotenlieder, but actually in other poems, but discovers the Kindertotenlieder, and here comes the kicker that is so important and you will never hear. Gustav Mahler chose five songs. We know that, right? It is the only song literature in Gustav Mahler's song literature that he called a cycle. He wanted it in this order, in this key relationship, and never to be altered from either. If it's transposed, there is a transposition that he knew of that was up one or one and a half step, but not down, and all of them consistently. In other words, no messing around. This is a gestalt. Now, here's the punchline. The five poems are completely and totally unrelated to anything within the Kindertotenlieder themselves. That means Gustav Mahler went in and took this poem to be his number one, this poem to be his number two. He pieced together a five song cycle to make a statement. And the statement is very much in the sense of Goethe, to some extent Herder, very much uh, in the Gustav Fechner Natur philosophy. And this is a kind of requiem, and the point of all of this is the process of grieving to resolution, from pain to, to acceptance, 
It is a requiem. Requiems are not for the dead. They're for the ones left over. Now, why is all this important? One is important because you should just have that in your head. Two things about Mahler's songs that's very important to you as an oboist. Probably the two most important instruments in Mahler's songs orchestrated are the oboe and the harp. The oboe is earth. It is the person. He is always the voice of the person experiencing what's in the song. Always. Especially in this piece. The harp is the transcendence of realities. I would like to avoid life and death as absolute places to go, but as a process and a journey. And that was the thrust of the Natur philosophy of the early 19th century of German romantic poetry, and is the essence of everything we meet in Gustav Mahler's poetry. It is about the life's mutation and process that at some point departs and goes to something we don't know what it is, right? The Natur philosophers believe that at the very least, we sloughed off our bodies and we came, we be, re became, and I'm not talking reincarnation, we re became the, the vibration and the harmony and the sound and the light that is nature, right? This is what this song is all about. Okay. Now, softer or louder or slower or faster? <laughs> yes. This, you're too slow. The, the, the danger in, in romantic songs, period, is that we get too personal. How about that? Okay. And this is the essence of German literature that is very, very important because with all of our layering of our belief in what nature tells us and all of the romantic poetry involved, and certainly Rückert's personal journey, which is, I'll get into the rest of the journey later, we can never forget that nature doesn't care. Don't load nature with things that are yours. This is very important for singers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're not going on here. That's not how you played it. But in fact, there has to be a kind of objectivity to the phrase. And I would beg you, as musicians, to concentrate completely and totally on two things in song repertoire. One, I don't know of any music in two bar phrases. Right? Da di da da ba di da da ba di da da ba da bum bum bum. Ah. You know that. It's always four bar, six bar, eight bar phrases. Usually it's sets of fours, right? And that's what we have here. So we need to hear, which would be his line in the orchestra. That's where we're going. And that ya da da is the motive of the entire cycle. And at the end of the last song, what we hear is this body 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 Ba -bum, ba -bum. That's all we hear. That's the end of it. That's the kernel you're looking for. And all this other stuff is leaning tones and passing tones. Now, the reason that I said two things, that's just pure musical. The reason why this is so important is because for a singer, if you want to learn how to sing German and you want to learn the German language better, sing a Gustav Mahler song. If you have trouble figuring out the phrasing of Mahler songs, look at the text. Verb is usually at the end. Mm -hmm. Everything else is gathering momentum, a lot of commas. Apropos commas, I would suggest, since you're playing the personal thing, to actually play the commas. If okay. not breathing, certainly Luftpause. Okay. You know? So let's start again, and let's, let's do pick up. You do know the orchestration, right? So you know when the strings come in, right? It's kind of a, it's kind of a polyphonic uh, uh, texture here that, that, that finally, whatever that number is, probably number one down here, where the, as uh, I kein Unglück komme, kein Unglück die and all the turns, ya da di da ba 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 ba, are melodic. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not melismas. Okay. And at the end as well, which we need to add that here because, okay. because the, because the strings play with you and it's ya yeah, da ba di ba di da. Okay. Okay. So try this. <laughs> That's terrific. That's in that, now you get that, right? Now think in your head, and this is one of my passions as a singer to work with instrumentalists. So you see, I think if they're thinking something like sunshine or, or, or no sunshine or grief, or whatever, that, that colors how they play. So what I want to say to you is you are the objective beauty of a dawn that is about to become morning. He 
is a person who has not slept all night and joins the dawn. Now, I think in, that's the kind of stuff we describe as singers. <laughs> You're not going to hear a lot of conductors in your life talk to you like that. Maybe a few, you yeah. know, right? But that's where you want to go. Okay. And try and use those dynamic markings as much as possible. The first one is piano, the second is pianissimo. Mm -hmm. And when the pianissimo, ars, ja, blah, blah, you have the whole string section coming in. And it's like this warm blanket that comes in. And at that point, everything just keeps an objective motion of itself. You are nature. You're the storm, you're the sunshine, you're everything else. You have an objectivity in you as orchestra that is relentless. Your nemesis are the horns in the Kindertoten Lieder. Mm -hmm. The Kindertoten Lieder in the horns are always fate. Fate is the enemy or the defining issue of German romantic poetry. It is very seldom personal this or anger of that and so forth. It is a dialogue of why now? And very often with a smile on your face and tears in your eyes. That's a stoic objectivity of German romanticism. Okay, let's start again. Body. seamless. Don't accompany him. Don't accompany him. Be as objective as an orchestra would be. You've got to breathe early okay. and know that you're saying the whole phrase. Okay. You're not saying, oh yay, I heard my kids are dead. Okay. No. You're saying, I've been awake, I'm suffering here. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. One more time. <sighs> Do came in and became, you know, oh, well, this guy, you know, this guy with his dead kids, and oh, my word, oh, my Lord, oh, my... Don't do that. Do okay. not acquiesce. Be very careful in Mahler's music that diminuendi very seldom have anything to do with tempo. For instance, at the very end of the song, you're not going to get slower. You're just going to go right into that wall. His verklingenlassen, which means to let it sound, mm -hmm. as it were, has nothing to do with tempo. Okay. It's a huge mistake. In general, well, I think we retard Schubert songs and Schumann songs way too much as well. It brings a kind of personal sentimentalism, which is an anathema to the real fateful conflict of man and nature. And we, as men, meaning persons, mention, are reading into nature what we want to believe is a symbol of our emotion. Mm -hmm. This is the genius of everything after Heine. Everything before Heine was a kind of laboratory in German literature that said, okay, those symbols mean this and that symbols mean that and so forth. And by the way, if you want to know more about that, on, on April 5th, I'm going to talk about that specifically in German literature. But there's a huge break between the words, worlds of Müller, of Winterreiser and Schwanengesang, uh, not Schwanengesang, but, but, but uh, uh, Schwanemüllerin, and Heine. And it is all about the first person in German literature. 
but it is us saying that those stars mean something and that this pain and your motive here very interesting why this ba da di da 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 the very the very phrase da da di da 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 in the fifth song becomes exactly the storm element ba da di da ba ba da da di da ba ba da da and all of these things are germane to this cyclical connection all the other songs that he wrote even even the the fada nigazeden are collections on a source of poetry. This is a cycle. It is cyclic in nature. It has information in the first song that we need in the last song. The glocko, that bing, bing, is where we're going. I meant the release of the body into vibration and sound, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go on. Don't slow up this phrase. Okay, sure. Uh, where are we? Just here. That's yeah, cool. especially. Let's keep on going. Okay. Right? I don't have numbers here and I don't have measure numbers. Um, can we go? Can, do you want me to play this phrase again or go Why, for why not? Two, okay. two bars the before pianissimo that. Pianissimo before that? Yeah. Da, 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 da. And don't wait for him. Make it, please join the sound. Right? Sure. Right? Sorry. Just. Hear it, hear it again exactly. In, in, in voice classes, we always do this sort of hear it, breathe into it, make it audible. It's the same thing for every musician. Hear the phrase you want to play before you put your finger. Hear, hear it, breathe into that, and let it become audible. He says, Zum Thema Ein Zurückkehren. We do not get back to Temple Primo until just about the bar we were playing. And what slows us all up is the horn comes back in and says, Too bad for you. We don't care. And it is a modulation that we're going to hear that very same horn theme turned a little bit sideways in the second song. Mm -hmm. The horn is always offering a commentary from a distance of, there's nothing to be done. It's what life is. This is very beautiful. And this storm thing, we have to hear this aggression, this power. And then, which we have, and you notice when we get back to Temple Primo, what does Mahler do? He gives us exactly what he did at the beginning of the song when that warm blanket came, right? Mm -hmm. And once we hit that Temple Primo, there is no 
fluctuation in tempo. Okay. And the strings double. The first violins double the voice, which means all those turns, you've got 12 people at the very least doing it exactly in the same reason, right? Okay. Can we just start just where the corn comes in? Can I actually ask about this line, the Ein Lamp line, the a little lamp went out in my soul. That's still angry. That's no, not in your soul. It is so beautiful. I'm glad you're right. Ein Lämplein verloch in meinem Zelt. A Zelt is literally a, a tent, but think of it more of as a Bedouin tent. Okay. The very existence, your, your, your world, a lampline, a, a little light that gives you light, that gives you warmth, that gives you vision, that gives you reason, mm -hmm. has been snuffed out. Felosh. Mm -hmm. That's your daughter. Mm -hmm. In meinem Zelt. Zelt is a wonderful poetic term. In my, in my existence is okay. more to the point, right? Okay. And that's why I think it's so important to have all this anger of, of you first that precipitates the nature storm mm -hmm. and comes in almost like a, ah, I lamp line falosh. If there's ever a, a sentence that belongs personal, it's that one. Okay. In mine um, horns have, when you say zelt, my existence, what do we hear? Body, body, da, ya, da, da. And then right back to now the sun that has come up above the horizon and we're in the morning mm -hmm. of some kind of clarity. There's some kind of mystical strength that bows before nature and God and fate and will that says, hi holy or healed, sei dem Freudenlicht der Welt. My personal light has been extinguished, but there is a reason that I don't know. Okay. And I have to embrace that. It's almost Buddhistic, really, mm -hmm. in, its, in its essence, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Make no mistake, Mahler himself said he could have never written this cycle had he written it after his child died. It is a perverse coincidence of absolutely no relevance whatsoever to the existence of this cycle that Mahler had the same fate as a father and that his oldest daughter died of scarlet fever. It is a perverse coincidence. It has nothing to do with it. The point of this becoming more personal is that Mahler also wrote very specifically that, it, of course, as a composer, all of his songs that he wrote, he wrote from his personal point, as singer, as baritone. He did not sing, right? But that's not some sort of gratuitous uh, uh, okay that it should be more baritone or not. The only gender specificity, by the way, of this entire cycle is actually the father's, regardless of Rückert. It's in the third song where the father says, I see you come in with the mother. It's in the fifth song where the father says. So I'm not here to harp on gender specificity of the kindertoten leader, but do not be at all shy about this being a father's testament, right? Mm -hmm. And the juxtaposition of the light that's extinguished with the heil dem Freudenlicht is incredibly important. And we need that change of color. So let this be okay. you and frustrated, and let this mezzo forte hardy. And please, both of you, embrace as much as you can in a piano instrument with it, the, the dissonance of high. Think of the long vowels of high. High, sei dem Freudenlicht der Welt. Right? Where do you want to go? Uh, should we go from right before <clears> the <throat> lamp line? Yes, um, I'll show you. Uh, can you just, it, it's a terrible place to start, but just sort of here. With the piano, we have, to, we have to really embrace, these are going to be low strings, and in the middle of this is probably going to be the horns already warming up a little bit. I'm not exactly 100% sure who plays that, but I know these are low strings. So don't let them get too pianistic. You're going to have all these things are sort of Wagnerian eighths and quarters. In other words, they kind of work against the beat, as it were, right? Uh, just start, you'll know when to come in. 
breathe. That's the one that really needs to be thick. Yada da yada ba da dee ba ba ba. Okay, right here. If you can get this, think of the other, the other most important instrument in all of modern songs are the harp, is the harp. And the harp joins us here, right? As well as the strings. Thong, 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 thong. It's the famous Mahler Wiegenlied, right? One more time. Can you play us a, a, an E, a, a, an Zelt? And she's going to do the pickup. <laughs> Embrace, embrace, embrace. Yes. Okay, one more time, now that you know where you guys are going to go, and you trust this tempo. Mm -hmm. Don't get glib about it, and don't go faster, okay. right? But this is the texture we want, and be more loving with it. It actually, even though it's mezzo forte, it becomes piano. So we have the with us and the singing that Freud and joy. We would want to articulate. Okay, the tempo primo with pickup. Lovely, wonderful, wonderful, great work. I hope that was somehow incredible. Do you have any questions? Was there no, I'm sorry, was there, another, was, there any, was there any question? No, that gives me a lot to think about. A lot I should have thought. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of interesting You have an enormous about. world of, ahead of you in Mahler's songs. Mm -hmm. Few instruments are more important than the oboe. Congratulations. Thank and you. a beautiful, beautiful sound. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Great.